Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Saba with Jeff Fox, and what you just saw was a ghost light being taken off the stage. Pretty apropos name because we're going to talk about uh, ghosts and spirits in this place, the Schubert Theater. Now, theaters are commonly known as tradition really reigns supreme, but the Schubert Theater itself is a place that's really steeped in tradition and strange traditions. Very strange things people say have happened here, from stagehands to actors and actri actresses who things have disappeared, things have mysteriously fallen over, and we're going to talk to some of the people who've actually worked here and had strange things happen. Take a listen to their own stories right now. Hold on, hold on, we're gonna bunny For almost a century, the Schubert Theater has thrilled audiences with elaborate shows like the musical Chicago. But when the lights go down and the curtains close, something mysterious takes center stage. We put the ghost light out every night, so just, just in case there was a ghost, he's able to see where he is at night. We believe that there's a spirit and and we also believe that it looks looks after all of us. <laughs> Actors, stagehands, and almost anyone who's worked behind the scenes at the Schubert has a story about their possible brush with a ghost. One evening in particular, um, the elevator started to operate on its own. You know, I don't use the elevator very often, so I thought it was strange. I was hearing the bell ring as it went from floor to floor. It was just very eerie, and I knew I was alone in the building, um, which is rather spooky the first time it happened. It has since happened fairly regularly. But most everyone believes this spirit isn't here to frighten or torment. What we have here is, is, a, is a hotbed of creation, uh, all good things, certainly not a, an evil ghost. I can say it doesn't scare me. I often get a, a very good feeling of well-being. So I don't know that we're haunted. I would say more like we're protected. And people report seeing, they report feeling, and I just, I wouldn't be alone in this place by myself. <laughs> now, we wanted to put it all in perspective, so we thought we would bring with us somebody who uh, has a little bit of experience with that. So we're going to bring out uh, mentalist Mark Salem. Come on out here, Mark. And Mark is going to be our tour guide this afternoon to uh, take us around the Schubert Theater. Hi, First Anna. of all, Hi. welcome. Good to see you. Hi, Jeff. And Mark will be here, by the way, the week before Christmas with uh, his show, Mind Games. Right. Well, let's and first of all talk, talk about, about being a mentalist. Yeah. Well, uh, as a mentalist, I'm a student of the mind. Uh, what the mind is able to conjure up, what possibilities are. I am a thought reader. I do pick up thoughts. And I'm certainly interested in the paranormal. I'm interested in the sorts of things that go bump in the night and the sorts of things that uh, we may discover here in the theater. Do you believe that spirits really exist here? I do believe that spirits exist here. Now, what we mean by spirits, what is, is, is a different kind of question. All right, well, we're going to take a tour of the Schubert. We'll give you an idea of uh, some of the things that have been reported over the years and some of the things you probably have never seen, even if you've been in the Schubert Theater. It's all coming up in uh, just a couple of minutes, so don't go away because we will be right back. And we call this the search for the Schubert spirit. I'm Jeff Fox with Anna Saba, and we are joined by mentalist Mark Salem. And Mark, you are a very credentialed person. I mean, you have a PhD, no fool in, you know what you're doing, right? Well, I, you're gonna take well us we're going to find out. Okay. <laughs> you know? Take the, us on a tour to well, explain well, to us what Well, first of all, you know, doing. I discovered this theater. I, I came here a number of weeks ago because my show opens here in December. And as soon as I walked into the theater, I felt all kinds of sensibilities going on here. And I began to ask people in the crew. I began to ask people backstage, you know, what's going on here? I mean, is this place full of this odd energy? And they said yes, and I began to hear stories. As somebody who is always interested in the paranormal, I began to find out more and more about what's going on around the theater. And, uh, for example, the room that you're headed towards right now, right this over dressing here, room over there, is a rather remarkable dressing room. Um, I know that uh, Catherine Hepburn had used this as her dressing room. It's also called the quick change room. You may see there's a mirror over there. And people have often said by looking in the mirror, they have seen other reflections behind them. In fact, the king and I, uh, the last incarnation of the king and I that was here, the person playing the king turned around, and he said that he saw Yule Brenner standing there. 
And what does that mean? Was, I would I have suspect, run. I suspect that for him it meant he had ahead. Brenner's approbation. That It meant, go ahead, kid, you could do it. All right, now we're going to go downstairs. And if you've never been downstairs here in the Schubert Theater, there is something just amazing. Because every company that comes here uh, from all across the country comes and uh, leaves their mark on the wall. In fact, this is something that uh, theater companies think of before they're even coming. It, it's world famous. It really is. And by leaving their mark on the wall, what they're doing is leaving a part of themselves and a part of their spirit. Indeed, our names are part of who we are. It's our spirit, and the spirit lives on here in many ways. I'm fascinated by how many shows literally involve things like spirits and ghosts. Brigadoon, for example, certainly a show that's about a place that disappears and comes back. But how does this contribute to the haunting of the Schubert? They're yeah. just pictures. They're just signatures. Ah, but deal. I think what this demonstrates to us, first of all, is the more remarkable range of creative minds who are here and who have left an imprint here physically. I mean, it's so interesting. Over here by Christmas Carol, we have all four ghosts have signed uh, the... Well, over there we have arsenic and old lace about the creaky, mysterious sorts of things that went on there. I think that what we have here is in one place ideas, thoughts, creativity that creates its energy. This theater goes back to the early part of the century. But there are also legends. Now, now we've talked about this before. Normally, when you go to the basement of a theater, and let's walk on a little bit more, when you go to the basement of a theater... Wait, it's just, just I thought I'd let you know. Sure. These boards are the original boards going back to the beginning of the theater, back in 1914, 1912. And indeed, not only do they creak at different sorts of times, but people do feel a lot of energy over here. I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, it's no, just no, that, no. that it occurred to me that, to keep that in mind. And things, odd things happened even today. I mean, Keith before... Um, Keith, was, our photographer Keith, here. our photographer, he was walking and he said suddenly a big box of nails shattered down on the floor and um, nobody else was down here. But every day. That's called gravity. <laughs> but this was far away from anything. I think so Keith was, was really a, We don't know. But what is missing down here? This is what we were talking about before. There's something that you normally find in a theater's basement or, or any basement. Well, first of all, there are no rats, mice, cockroaches, anything like that found here. And considering all the construction that goes around and certainly the bottom basements of theaters and that sort of thing, we certainly find that this uh, is rather unusual. All right, let's so walk. So you think that actually there's somebody, a, a caretaker? Well, I do theater. believe. I mean, one thing that we did find out when the name Potter came to me, we looked up the name Potter, they went to the historical records, and there was a Potter family who owned this land even before the theater was built. And indeed, they seem to have been farmers, they seem to have been caretakers, and uh, that sort of thing. This is rather unusual. I mean, uh, this dial, dial for, for murder. murder. I mean, what, what somebody had told me is that th if you were to touch this, everywhere it feels normal, except for the blood, which for some reason, and again, people, just, just touch it. Mm, I don't think so. This, ew, gross. Isn't that strange? And, you know, people what is say that? they don't know. Is that Vaseline? They, they don't know what this is. They keep taking it off and it keeps coming back. It's very, very strange. It's so dry here, but yet, yeah. oh, that is And that's dumb. the only place that it is. It is somewhat odd, somewhat weird. All I mean, right, let's go over here because there's, a, there's yet another mural. And, and this is we part won't of. say the name. Yeah, yeah this is part of theater. stage folklore that, that you don't say the name of this Shakespearean that's play. That's correct. It's often called the Scottish play. Tradition, again, ghosts, Banquo, it involves ghosts, it involves spirits, it involves haunting, and it involves some sorts of misfortune. And because of that, whenever somebody's performing in this show, they don't mention the show's name. In this theater, for example, Christopher Plummer uh, himself did uh, the Scottish play. Now, right. when somebody says the name of that Scottish play, what, do they, what are they afraid would happen? Misfortune. I think, again, theatrical people indeed are theatrical. And because of that, there is an element of fears, anxieties. You say things in order for the reverse to happen, the traditional break a leg instead of good luck, in order to get whatever spirits are living in the theater to go on. Now, we keep saying, you know, what are spirits? And I think spirits are not necessarily ghostly entities, but I do think that all of us have feelings that, that could retain themselves within the walls, particularly of a place that's old. It is a feeling, it's a sensibility, it's a perspective. And I think, you know, as a mentalist, I think that these things manifest themselves to our minds. Now, in this room, there are a number of caricatures that were done by Saul Hirschfeld. If, if you don't know, Hirschfeld is very famous. Uh, he has done caricatures of just about everyone in the theater and every Broadway show. You know that you have made it when you have had your caricature done. 
But there is a famous story about one caricature that's hanging here of Mary Martin. That's right. Uh, the Mary Martin uh, caricature was uh, hanging with a bunch of other caricatures. Uh, Marie Osmond was opening in a show that Mary Martin had originally done here, and that's The Sound of Music. As soon as she came here into the theater, Marie Osmond saw that this was swinging. It was swinging back and forth. And it was upstairs, it was in the main lobby, and there was no drafts by it, there were no vents by it. The other things around it also were uh, absolutely stationary. So the point was that for some reason this was swinging. As soon as Marie Osmond finished the show, that stopped swinging. And I think again it was a sense, uh, certainly Marie Osmond felt, that this was something that was saying, Marie, go for it. Now it would be a shame to have someone like Mark here and not take advantage of some of the things that he does so well as a mentalist. So that's what we're going to do in just a minute. We will be right back. And welcome back, everyone. I'm Anasava with Jeff Fox, and more importantly, Mark Salem. And we're conjuring up spirits here at the Schubert Theater. We're going to head over to the stage right now and kind of let Mark do his thing. Yeah, and, and as we walk in, we should tell you that the Schubert has been around for a really long time, uh, since the uh, early 19-teens. Used to be that when a show would open on Broadway, first thing it would do is it would have previews uh, either here or in Philadelphia or in Boston. So some of the biggest shows you have ever seen or you've ever heard of really had their premieres right here at the Schubert Theater in New Haven. And it is a, a beautiful theater and a beautifully preserved theater and a really great place to see legitimate theater. Indeed. And Virtually uh, every Oscar and Hammerstein uh, show began here. Uh, certainly Streetcar Named Desire with Brando was on this very stage. He was uh, discovered here, right? That's right. All right, Marlon now, Brando. All right. We so have you here, Mark, so we should take advantage of what it is you do. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate some of the sorts of things that have been done over a period of time in order to contact um, the unknown, and uh, we're going to have some fun with that, and we're going to try some of these experiments. Okay. Uh, certainly one of the classics that has been done in the last century involves slates. Okay, and this uh, was always done by mediums. In this case, it's now, next now to just large. So you at home know, we had talked about what we were going to do on, on the show, and we even ran through some things, but when we got to this point, this is where we stopped. So what yeah. we're going to see now is pretty much the first time for us as well as for you. Yeah. Jeff, would, would you just sign your name over there, please? Mm -hmm. And Anna, would you sign your name over here, please? Mm-hmm. Would you sign I'm your name over there? Job. And... Um, Basically, spiritualists in the last century would do this sort of thing. Uh, indeed, this was considered very much the internet of its time. Uh, this sort of uh, communication, which they were trying to have communication with things that were known or unknown. Uh, Anna, the other thing that I would like you to do, um, do, you, do you have the chalk? Right uh, here. Okay, please take the chalk. Just place it down over, over there. Great. Now, what I want you both to do, take the rubber bands, okay. wrap that around the slate, there you go. And now wrap it the other way. Is this magic? This isn't magic, but it is a replication of what was done. Okay. Now, what we had was the slates. Now, to evoke what was felt at those times, they would call upon whatever it was there. Would they please help them? Would they communicate with them? Um, just to take this one step further, and you ask about magic, and let's take this into a little bit of the mind stuff as well. Just, uh, you know, I asked the staff to get some books that were spooky. For us. So uh, we got uh, Death of the Busybody. I guess that may be us. Okay. Uh, we got uh, Stephen King's Carrie. Oh, and the most frightening book of them all, Stepmom. Mm. <laughs> all right. Uh, which one of these do you want to work with, Jeff? Uh, I'll work with the Stepmom. Okay. okay. Work with Stepmom. This is what I want you to do. Anna, just say stop at any point as I go like this. Stop. Okay. Could you turn to page 112 in your book, please? Page 112 in my book. Okay. Look, the first word. Uh -huh. Have you got it? Yep. Okay, keep that word in mind. Just keep that word in mind. Okay. All right. So not only are we going to try to evoke things, which indeed certainly has within it maybe elements of illusion, but we're also going to try a mental thing that's tied in directly to a free choice here. So if there is anything that could be evoked here, do you feel any movement in there yet? Yes, I did. I felt it about two minutes ago. Very strange, I'm isn't it? I'm creeping out right now. All I right. would like to get rid of this slate. All right. Why not take the rubber band off? No, I'm afraid. Yes. All right. Let's just see. What? Well, there's nothing, nothing there. Right. Nothing there. 
<gasps> oh my. All right, and it says, I can't read it upside down. We are with you, friendly. Potter. Casey Potter. Something. M. Bean and more. That's very strange. Now, are you sure that you didn't slide something out of there? Because if yeah. not, I'm leaving right yeah, now. Take we take these. No, you've yeah. held these, you signed these, these. But let me There's ask you another nothing. question. No, these are, what was the word you were thinking of? More. It's right, right here at the top of the, top of the page there. The word is more. That's the first word. That's and the last word on the slate. Oh, my. Now, that's here. strange. All right. Now, again, we're not reaching ghosts, but we are in the spirit of the theater. We are in the spirit of the things Let's that are Let's try here. something else. All right. One thing that they used to do also in the realm of trying to communicate with the unknown was try writing was certainly one way to that they would try to reach the unknown. And All now right. we know. And while, while you get that, let me just tell everybody. Uh, that what we are doing is we're here at the Schubert Theater. It is the Friday before Halloween. This is Mark Salem, who is a mentalist, who will be appearing here in uh, Mind Games coming up just before Christmas. And we thought we'd have a little bit of fun uh, taking a look at the spirits of the Schubert Theater this afternoon. Right. Now, spirits would also try to communicate through other kinds of ways, um, through the sound of what then was called spirit bells. Okay, you can just take it. You see, it yeah, this nice is good. We want Anna to be the guinea pig in all well, of it. Has an, it has a nice little <laughs> ring to it, doesn't it? It has a nice little ring, doesn't it? I'm a believer. And yes, I don't even want, okay. I don't even want people great. to think that you, you know, earlier we had done something with the pendulum and you were afraid people would think that you were doing something with right, it. Right, right. So what I want you both to do, and everybody here, just imagine, just imagine that the spirits were able to be evoked and able to make the bell ring, right? Use your imagination. Just imagine that happening. Very strange. Why is that still moving? Oh my. <laughs> All right, now, this is weird, guys. All right, now wait. You could even hold the bell yourself. No. I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is just really crystal. Not this is, I mean, you can take this. This is not anything you... I don't see the, any... There's the, nothing no, in there that I see. The clapper even comes off completely. Yeah, no, I mean, there, it, lo it looks... You know... How did this, that happen? Here, right How did that, right that happen? Forward. That's strange. My heart's beating a little fast <laughs> as well. All right, let's... We, we're, we're sort of short on time, so let's try one more, okay? okay? If we're short on time... How much time do we have left? How much time do we have, Amy? About three minutes, Mark. About three minutes. Let me just try something quickly. Okay. Whether or not this will work completely, I'm just not sure. Okay. Um, I asked you to bring a blank cassette. These are mine. Um, I put something on They're this brand tape. New. I put this on first. Okay. Now, that's uh, the famous song uh, from the theater, certainly. What I want you to do is take out a cassette. Now, this is a cassette on a This is brand you, new. You I bought it. Now, just hold it up in the air and imagine we're able to place on that cassette some kind of spirit. Don't huh. be frightened. Oh, easy for you to say. <laughs> All right, let's take it. This is the beginning of the tape. Mm -hmm. press, the, press the play button. Not to record, just play. <laughs> just hold it. <laughs> now this was an empty cassette. This is you a had brand new empty, empty cassette. Anna just took it out of the package. Oh God, <laughs> get me out of here. Turn that off. Turn that, turn I it off. I don't know if I want to turn, turn it, it off. off. Should I leave it on more? No, turn it off. Okay. <laughs> turn it off. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Don't be frightened. Oh, wow. Listen. What was that? Okay. Well, now you can take no. the set home. I don't think she wants it anymore, no, Mark. We, ha we have either. under two minutes if you want to do, right. if you the, the point, do one more thing. Okay, the, what, what's most important to keep in mind with all of this is that the spirits of the Schubert Theater are the spirits of entertainment. It's the spirits of enjoyment. It's just, they're not frightening things. The spirits no, no, don't of say the they're theater. not frightening because right now, My I believe Anna is about is no, no. as frightened as they get. But these aren't things for you to be frightened about. They certainly are unknown, oftentimes unexplainable. 
really quickly, that's, Mark, let's do one more thing before we go, okay? All right. We let, have let, about let, a minute. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that we would have that much time left. Let me uh, just, uh, well, let me finish with something that I had uh, shown that, that parallels this a little bit, but this is a key that we had downstairs from the Schubert Theater. Okay, Jeff, could you just place your hand over here? All right. Now, again, just if we try to evoke the spirits of the Schubert. Imagine. As far as I know, I am not moving my hand. And neither is Mark. And I don't think Mark is moving his hand. So that key does look like it's, oh my gosh. <laughs> now, All right. once again. When you started this... with me, Jeff, you were a critic and a cynic, and now what? Well, um, I'm still <laughs> skeptical, okay. but it's neat to, it's definitely neat to see happen. Well, I, I think that's part of it. I think that, that the, the fantasy that the unknown provides for us, I, I think there are many mysteries that we don't have is a unique place. I think that there are benevolent feelings here, that there are benevolent spirits. It could be the potters, it could be the spirit of theater's past, and the other, who knows what else is here. Certainly the significance of the ghost light that we began with, that there's always a light in theater that's left there for those who may have gone to another side and who are always sitting down in the theater to find their way through. Mark, thanks a lot for coming and joining us this afternoon. You'll be back here you. at the thanks Schubert the week thank before you. Christmas. That's it's right. called Mind, Mind Games. Games. And uh, thank you for joining us and taking a look at the, the spirits inside the Schubert Theater this afternoon. Yes, as unnerving as it was, we had a really good time, and we hope that you did too. And of course, we'll leave a light on for anybody, the ghost light. The ghost light. For anybody who might still be around after we're leaving. <laughs>